Hello, this is Michael Trayvins RV Center here to congratulate you on your 2023 Flagstaff Classic 832 IKRL Island Kitchen Rear Living Travel Trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, we're going to leave plenty of room for that. Slide down there, this awning, and an awning that's off that slide. Off campsite, you're going to leave plenty of room for two sets of slides. And I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be as you're parking. Your power is going to plug in all the way on this rear corner. And then your docking station is going to be up towards the front here. Well, about the middle, really. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. Unit comes with a power tongue jack. A night docking light should you arrive at night. Should you raise or lower the unit. Should you lose power underneath this stopper here, so a hand crank will get this up and down without power. That hand crank also has a sep another purpose as a manual override for our power stabilizing jacks. But once we've got our unit level, next thing we are going to do is stabilize it. Come over here, hit extend, that's going to run these down. I'm going to recommend jack pads to put down underneath these to protect the feet. Run these down just until you feel it's starting to lift the unit and stop. Repeat the process in the rear. Extend a little further down here. Um, just when you run these down from back here, make sure you straighten up these legs. Keep them loose so they will move when they hit the bottom. Or bring them back up. But um, get all four of them down. You got your unit level and stable. We can go ahead and hook up our power and water. You got a big long 50 amp cord plugs in here in the rear. These do twist to lock. They go in at about 11 o'clock. Wiggle it in, turn it to noon. And then put your washer on at the end of that 50 amp service should you need it there is a 50 to 30 amp dog bone comes your convenience pack a lot of caps are just 30 amp and then if you ever need to go from 30 down to 110 you've got a 15 30 excuse me 30 to 15 amp reducer to go on the end of that just remember when you're running off just 110 don't run both acs etc you know run power accordingly all right, you got your power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. At campsites, we will hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when hooking water up. Hook, for, hook up your water pressure regulator. Hook up your hose, but don't turn that hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. There it is. All we're going to do at this point, folks, is make sure our drain plug's back in there. Throw some plumber's tape around it, not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Some good plumber's tape on that, get that in there nice and snug, then you can turn that water on. Go inside and open up the slides if you need to, but I need you to get in there and open up all of your water taps. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them, your sinks, your showers. Then you can shut them off and you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to go dry camping. In that case, we'll fill up our freshwater tank. Campside rear corner. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell that it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right there. Or two, on the inside where you check the level of your black and gray tanks, there's also a freshwater button. Keep an eye on that when you're filling it up. Once it's full, remove that hose. And then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump and hooked up to city water. That is already pressurized. All right, let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. We're going to start back up front. All right, up front, we got our propane tanks. There is your regulator. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open or put it in the center and it'll automatically switch over. Your batteries, check them every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road. Down here is your battery disconnect. That would disconnect all your battery power to the unit. 
That'll come important later when we're talking about your carbon monoxide and propane detector. Then our power stabilizing jacks. There's a hand crank to get that rubber stopper off the rear there to manually get them up and down. Got a pass-through storage here. Inside you have a griddle. A griddle has legs. Next to that will go to this table. I'll show you where those go on the other side. Spray port hose. That can be used in your out, uh, spray port area over on the other side. Your outdoor shower. Here is our freshwater fill. Here's our tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black and gray tanks. Antifreeze inlet for winterizing. Cable and satellite inlet. Black and gray tanks as well as low point drains. Again, your hot water heater, a night docking light. Flu for your furnace, couple things on that. Make sure you steer clear of that. It does get hot when it's running. Uh, and make sure nothing's ever blocking it. The slides do have wiper seals that need a, uh, a fluid applied to them occasionally to keep them from dry rotting over time. There's a vent for your uh, fridge, or excuse me, for your cooktop. Got another storage area back here. Again, our power. You got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. Okay, also, our, our prep for a backup camera. There's your uh, accessory hitch. Again, our power stabilizing jacks, fresh water, fresh water drain. Big white handle there. Dump that when leaving the campsites. Got a couple outdoor speakers. Our awning. Because awning, you only want to run them out until that flap falls down. You can see that bar. If you hold that down, that will continue to run itself out backwards onto itself. Over here, we can clip on a TV here. Here's your cable hookup and 110. Here is the lip for Quick Connect LP right there. That you can set your griddle and stand out here. That Quick Connect hose will hook up here. Oh, he's stabilizing jacks. There's our docking lights. Prep for solar, you can plug in a solar panel right here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. So it covers everything out here. Let's take a look on the inside. All right, coming up inside the unit, first thing I have to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone in this camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of emergency. Straight in front of me, here's my control panel. Right now we're still doing a water test so your fresh black and gray tanks are all full that's your galley tank um brand new battery all of your lighting here's where you can connect your uh this pad to bluetooth which you want to get the google play control app the rv app um to utilize all this from your phone just about everything your slides and awnings um bedroom lighting wi-fi booster i'll send you a video on that from the wi-fi ranger Here's where you turn on your water heater. If hooked to gas, your water heater if hooked to electric, it does make a difference, choose correctly. Here's where you turn on your water pump when utilizing your fresh water. Here's your tank heater. That's a 12 volt pad that's on your tank to keep them from freezing in inclement weather. Only turn that on if you need to. Your awnings, I already told you about running them out. You're only gonna run them out until you see that bar. I showed you that. Um, your other awning comes out on your. So this is awning number two here. Bring that back in. And this starts to roll in. I'm going to extend your other awning to show you that coming out. Show that working. I don't get too far or too close to some tables over there. But, and the same thing, the slides will utilize those when closing the unit up. If you have a tire pressure monitoring system with this unit, I will send you a video from TP, TST on them. Up here is your Go Power Solar Controller. I'll send you a video from them as well, from GP Electric. Your only concern on this is just keeping that unflooded, which is simple, it should stay there from this point on. The whole purpose of this is to keep your solar panels from overcharging your batteries. Lastly on this wall is my thermostat. 
So I'm going to go into one. I'm going to crank that air up. Turn this temperature down. And get that AC going. There it goes. Show you on these ACs. Here's a quick dump. Try to get cool off just in here or close them back up and more will go through your vents. I'm gonna cycle through. You can make that heat. Let me shut that off. Generally the AC will shut off kind of quickly. If I go through the same system, turn on the heat, when the heat kicks on, you'll notice that when I shut that off, it does take a few minutes for that fan to cycle through. I need to turn it on. There it goes. You hear that blasting. There's your return for that. Now you will see generally when you shut those off, oops, system, shut those off. They usually take a few minutes to run through before they actually shut off. Also here in the doorways, you break the box and fuses. A ton of 15s, a 20, a 5, another 20. A little variety in there. Highly recommend having those with you when you go camping. You got a 110 with GFCI reset on your island. Your Magic Chef fridge, all the controls for that are indoors. This is a safety strap. Safety bar to keep that from bouncing open. Bouncing open as you're going down the road. Speaking of things bouncing, your plumbing. Keep an eye on that. Bouncing, if you travel a lot in this, you're bouncing the house down the road a lot. Keep an eye on it. Make sure you're not getting any leaks anywhere. Light and fan above your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn that to high. Hit your spark and that's how all these light up. Same thing on your oven. Turn that to light. Spark it here. That will light your oven, then your pilot light, and then turn it to your desired temperature. Rock that panel light down and it becomes an oven light. Got a pop-up power port here. Make sure you travel with this glass down. Entertainment center. Come over here to our Remote storing area. Turn on our TV. Only thing on your TV, go into your menu. Go to your digital channel scan and run a channel scan for your local channels of where you're going to be at. Down below that is your sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth. Nice system. I usually don't use the remote. Um, tuner. Be able to get this to change to auxiliary FM. There we go. Um, I don't know how we'll pick up any channels inside here, inside this big metal building, but into interior and exterior speakers, A and B. Turn on and off here or on your remote. Fireplace, not just for looks. I can go through and show you all the pretty colors, but the biggest thing is I can feel it already the heat. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of wasting your gas, if you're at a campsite, crank up this electric heater and it will get it toasty in here in no time. There's actually a re remote for that as well. I'll show you quickly how to turn your sofa into a bed. Move your back cushion. There's your Velcro down. Standing in the middle gives you good leverage. Pop that up, hold your legs out, pull it towards you. And just that quickly, you got another sleeping quarters. Putting this away, pick the back up first. Otherwise you will damage your sofa and we don't want to do that. Again, standing in the middle gives you good leverage for holding this up. Hold your legs in, back and knife it back down and watch your fingers. Return your cushions, and just that quickly, you are back to the sofa. 
sofa that has 110 and charging ports on both sides. Got our recliners here. Got to bring our lumbar in and out. This parachute pole, we call it. We'll recline, use your legs to push it back. Safety straps for your chairs as well for traveling. You have a hand crank open vent up in here. Our smoke alarm. Down here is our 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. Reason I mention that's 12 volt, that's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, use that battery disconnect if you're gonna be gone for the day to keep this from running your battery down. Back in our bathroom, another 110 with GFCI reset. This shower door for traveling. You wanna bring this all the way to the left and latch that on for travel. You've also got a max air vent that's controllable by here. All you gotta do is turn it on and it is going to open and turn on your fan. You change all your fan speeds here. Shut off and it will close itself and shut the fan off. When you arrive, flush your toilet, put a couple gallons of water in there, your black tank will thank you later. Lastly, our bedroom. There's our griddle for outdoors. You do have storage underneath this bed. Well, there are actually these drawers, but you can access them this way, as well as get your outdoor storage there. So make sure you keep that outdoor storage area locked for safety reasons. People can come in through there and get into your trailer from underneath this bed. Our lights, touch it once or hold it. Uh, just a one touch on those. One touch here as well. You are prepped for a washer and dryer in here. And prepped for a second AC. There's where the sensor location is. This box is prepped for it. All right, that about covers everything on the inside. It's act like we're getting ready to leave the campsite and close the unit up. So what we're gonna do is I like to come to my main control panel and shut off all of my lights. Then I can see all the other lights that I have to walk through and individually shut off. After shutting off all these accent lights, then you go to your control panel and turn back on your interiors. Now I say doors and drawers. Walk through your unit, make sure all your doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna impede your slides from coming in. Our awnings are in. And I'm just going to run one of these in because they're still uh, finishing prepping your unit. But I'm just going to show you how to do this with our bedroom slide. Turn back on our lights so you can see what's going on in here. Normally you wouldn't have to. For slide number one. Oops. This is going to be our campsite. That's all you're going to do is hold your button down. Again, you see why every space has to be utilized. Nothing's going to impede our slides. Close everything up that might be in the way. Why don't you hear that little noise? That's just the slide mechanism saying I'm in all the way. All right, continue that throughout with the last two slides. Again, making sure everything's out of the way. And then we'll exit our unit. The biggest thing on these steps, make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this piece will catch on it going up. Your feet are also adjustable by flipping up on these. And move that up and down where you need it. Before we leave the dump station, we're going to lock and deadbolt our exterior door. Lift and turn this handle and you're all set for travel. All right, if we were dry camping, we will bring up our stabilizing jacks, come back here to this freshwater drain, open that up, dump the fresh water, hook up our hitch, and head on to the nearest dump station or home, whatever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we'll unhook our water, our cable, our power, 
bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station. Now the dump station park accordingly. Your dump is going to be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Got a 10 foot hose coming to your convenience packs. You're going to hook that up. And first thing we're going to pull is that black handle underneath here. That's going to be your sewage. Once that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, check the levels. Um, if it shows empty, come back outside, leave that black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook it up to this tank flush valve. Again, emphasizing leaving that black handle open, turn on that hose and let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, we'll remove our hose. Go inside, make sure all that washout that you put in there has drained. Come out here, close that black handle, and pull our front gray. Now, I will pull here, and then step up to there and pull. When those are done, close those grays. Go over here and pull this extra galley tank. While those are draining, if we're done camping for the season, we're going to come up here to our hot water heater, lift up on this pressure release valve, just like that. Be careful, stand out of the way because it's going to dump hot water out. When that's done, you can pull, go ahead and pull that drain plug for your residual hot water. If your hot water heater doesn't seem to be working, come out here and check to see if either one of these are bubbled up. Those are overheat reset. You just simply press it back in. You won't have that much hot water coming out of there after your uh, low point drains have drained. We just haven't drained them yet. All right, we're never done. Take your sewage hose, store it in a sanitary place, hook up your hitch, and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this flag staff for many years to come. Happy camping.